The first step before my first print was to stick on some painter's tape to the printer bed. Then it was on to setting up the auto level sensor by lowering the extruder head onto a business card and then adjusting the sensor height until the sense light just comes on. The printer came with a test STL file already on the SD card. So I used that as the first print, which came out perfect. There are special settings for printing the Spitfire shell, so follow the company's settings carefully. Fortunately, there are detailed instructions as some of the settings are quite unusual from what is typically the norm for 3D printing. It took some incremental tweaking, but I was able to get a pretty nice print of all the parts. Though not without some issues. So I've been printing for roughly 20 hours. I've got various pieces done. I've got parts of the fuselage, like this tail piece here. And now I've started on the wings. Uh, I've got the right wing in pieces, like you see here, that will be assembled together. And I'm working on the right wing, as you see, being printed here. And it's estimated this will take nine hours to print. So I started it here in the morning, and hopefully it'll be done sometime in the afternoon. Man, I start it before work and come back after work, and hopefully it's done. Uh, it's a slow process. 3D printing has never been really fast, as far as on the consumer level. But as long as it's good and consistent, that's really the main thing that uh, we look for. So, so far, so good. I've had a few little nitpicks. I'm still tweaking the settings here and there, uh, although it's good enough for, for government use, as they say. Um, I've just been nitpicking and, and tweaking the settings a little bit by little bit each time I print something, just to see uh, minor changes, to see, get, get some minor improvements. But so far, I've been pretty happy. This printer has been working like a champ. Uh, it's really been uh, trouble-free. Uh, I think only some minor stuff. I had some tape that lifted off the bed. And that's my own some frog tape I use. I think it just wasn't sticky enough. And so it caused a little bit of warping on one of the really long prints, but the prints are still usable. They're just a minor knit. So I decided to change over to some of the tape that actually was included with the printer. And hopefully this will do a little better. We'll see after nine hours. Uh, other than that, the printer's gonna be easy to use. Uh, I haven't had any issues so far. I still need to uh, organize some of the wires, but nothing has caused any interference or jammed. And at this point, I've been really quite happy with this printer. The print quality has been fantastic, and it's been consistent. And so anything else is just icing on the cake. So we'll let this thing run and see how it does. Well, the cake still didn't taste quite right, as even the included tape not only lifted off the bed, but also horribly stuck to the parts and was rather difficult to remove. But I had one more thing to try. Captain tape specifically sized for 3D printers. This is very thin and smooth yet sticky tape. It was my first time using it, so I was eager to see how well it worked. So with the Captain tape, I think it stuck much better this time. I was really happy with the results. It did lift up a little bit, uh, so I wasn't completely happy, but it did lift up the least amount. And it also left a really nice, smooth, mirror-like finish on the bottom. That was really impressive. So I think we're getting closer to it. The pieces I printed are certainly workable. I will use them. And so I just will continue to tweak it as I print other pieces, maybe different pieces, and see what I can improve. Uh, what I might ultimately end up doing is just simply printing with a wider brim. That means it gives a larger footprint to stick and just trim off the excess when I'm done. That probably will be the ultimate solution, but I will still continue to tinker with settings such as uh, the temperature and the heated bed temperature and, and the nozzle temperature, those kind of things. It, like many people say, this is more of an art than really a science sometimes, and so you just, you just kind of hack at it and see what works and then save those settings. Well, I've had my first major failure I set a print for overnight printing, uh, not very long, but I started just before I went to bed. And I woke up in the morning and I saw that the print had scarred the table and it actually had failed on this print. It looks, this looks pretty bad. You can see it. Something happened. 
And then I noticed that all four of the screws, the nuts, the fly, the butterfly nuts had all fallen off. So the bed was completely floating. You can see the piece, there's a spring, the little, little butterfly nut. And I, as I was putting it back together, I realized, wait, one of the screws are missing. What happened to the fourth screw? And then I looked at the piece that had failed. And somehow it had pulled the screw out. It, it had printed over the screw and pulled the screw out. So the screw is embedded into the print. That is the weirdest thing. I've never seen anything like that happen. I think what happened is I basically had uh, not screwed everything down as tight as I thought it should have been. The instructions were kind of vague. It says tighten the bed down. I thought they were pretty tight, but I guess not, I guess they worked themselves loose after uh, 20 hours of printing. So this is something I'm going to have to check every periodically and uh, make sure I'll tighten it a little more this time. But <laughs> it's kind of the funniest thing I've ever seen. Hopefully I haven't hurt the head because the head looks like it scratched the bed a little bit. So I need to double check that the head's still working good. It turns out no damage was done, so with all the parts printed, it was on to final assembly. First I trimmed any flashing from the parts with a hobby knife. And some sandpaper. Though not without some collateral damage. Prick me, do I not bleed? All the parts are glued together with medium CA. There are also numerous alignment tabs to lock the pieces together. A couple squirts of kicker sets the glue in seconds. I also found the glue bond surprisingly strong. Rinse and repeat gluing all the parts together. It's nearly foolproof and assembles quite fast. Use a soldering iron or glue gun to open up the servo lead slots and wings and bottom fuselage opening. Slide in the wing lock. Aileron servo lead extensions. And finally the servos, which I simply hot glued into place. I should mention that the battery has this neat little clip to keep it into place. And with that, join me next time when I attempt to fly this thing.